Hey everybody! I wanted to make something kind of different this time around. I wanted to talk about my journey in programming and how I've gotten where I am. Um, because I think that everyone's journey is a little bit different, which sounds kind of obvious and cliche, but I mean this in a serious way though, because um, it's it's not as simple as just taking a class and just getting good at something. I mean, everyone has their own path in life, and um, yeah, but anyway, I'm going to jump in. So first, before I talk about Python, which is kind of the main thing, um, I really want to talk about just my journey overall in programming. Um, so, and just kind of my journey in computer science. <laughs> So when I was in high school, I never did any programming, and I never did any advanced stuff. I really just did my schoolwork and just kind of did bare minimum and got by and didn't really care. Um, I was a decent student. I mean, I, I'm kind of like, I didn't mind learning and I was paying attention in class, but like I really wasn't, you know, I was just kind of quiet and not really engaging much and putting myself out there and all that but I was also pretty gifted like I was I was definitely a gifted student and I was outpacing my class most of the time and almost every class that I was in either that or I just wasn't trying at all but I was still getting like B's and C's regardless I mean I literally never studied for anything in high school for the most part I, I just played video games all the time and um you know, when I was in class, I just kind of did my homework for my other classes, and I never really, you know, I didn't really have to study for anything. But, uh, fast forward, I graduated high school in 2015, went to school for two years at a local community college, and I basically flunked out, essentially, because I, well, basically I withdraw, uh, did I... Yeah, sorry, I was trying to remember the year. It was 2017. I withdrew from college in 2017, so I went there for two years. Um, I basically flunked out my first semester and withdrew my last semester, so my transcript looks pretty crazy. Um, but I majored in a couple different things. I switched from media broadcasting to accounting to computer science and stayed in computer science until I finally withdrew. And one of the reasons I withdrew from college was because... I wasn't really ready, like, first of all, college was a big wake-up call for me, because it was like, oh, you can't, you can't just be smart anymore, like, you have to actually try, and I was like, I'm, I can't, I can't put forward the effort, because I don't know what I want to do, and it's, it's just like, what am I even fighting for, you know, like, why am I even getting this degree, I don't even know what the world is like, you know, I, I'm, I just got out of school, I mean, now I'm going right back into school. I don't, I still, I just want to experience the world, you know, like I, and I remember telling everyone when I was in high school that I was going to take a gap year between finishing high school and going to college. And, um, yeah, I basically got pressured into applying for my school, for my high school. So I was like, whatever, I guess I'll just do it. Also, there was this big like state scholarship that was going around that, you know, I didn't know if I could get it if I took a gap year or not. So, I was like, well, I guess I have to, so, yeah, that didn't work out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was not a good time. So anyway, I, I won't go into my whole life story, though, but essentially, I dropped out of school in 2017. I did, like, tech support jobs and call center jobs and kind of hated my life for a while. I mean, I was pretty good at tech support, but I, it wasn't fulfilling enough. It wasn't challenging enough. It was very unstimulating. It was just helping people reset their password and clear their browser cookies and stuff. It was like, I, I know I can do better than this. So, um, yeah, so I went back to school. Uh, I tried to go back to school a couple times and eventually, long story short, ended up in University of Arizona back in 2021. I started there and I've been there ever since. And, um, Somewhere around 2022, early 2022, I think it was like January of 2022, I started programming in Python, and I've been programming in it ever since. 
Now, I have to backtrack just a little bit because in my last semester of my community college in 2017, I was taking a programming class and I got really behind in this class and I was just really lost. Like I could not get anything working and it was visual basic, which is a god awful language, depending on what you're doing. I think, I mean, it's fine, I guess, but it wasn't my kind of language. Um, and I hate writing code for UI stuff. It's just really not my thing. So yeah, essentially, um, I got really behind in this class and I had a really great professor. She was super nice and she tried to help me out, but I just could not, I was like way behind. Like I basically just, I haven't done any assignments and it was already like six weeks in and I was like, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. And I was just so lost and yeah, it just, it didn't work out. Um, so I also empathize with people in, in my coding classes who don't get a good start and stuff because I know what that's like. I know what it's like to get swamped on stuff and it's just not fun. But anyway, so I was so, I, I kind of had some trauma from my last programming class. I was like, oh God. I remember telling everyone, like, I didn't want to do programming. I remember telling everybody after I flunked out of school that I was like, oh, I hate programming. It's so hard. It's so whatever. I just, I don't want to do it, which is so funny and ironic. And that's just the moral of the story also is that, you know, everyone's journey in programming is just, I mean, just in life, it's not very linear. You never know where you're going to be, you know, 10 years from now or five years from now or even two years from now. Um, but anyway, so, okay, so I was in my first year of my time at Arizona back in 2021 to 2022. And I remember knowing that I had to take a coding class sometime soon. And I was like, oh no, I got to take a programming class. Like I am nervous. I don't know what I'm going to do. <sighs> Sorry. Sleep schedule has been crazy lately. Um, yeah, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a coding class coming up. Like I'm really nervous about this because I don't want to flunk out again. I got swamped last time. So I was like, let me just try to learn programming on my own, like before this class. So I can at least get a head start. I told myself, I don't have to become a master of this language. I just have to learn like all the basics, like not all the basics, but at least like probably what the first few weeks would cover. And then once I do that, then I can stop if I want to. I don't have to keep pushing in this. So I did. Um, and I, the way I started programming, the very first way that I started and by the way it was the ISTA 130 class that I was so afraid of which is so ironic because by the time I actually took that class I had pretty much knew everything in the class like I um I mean I didn't know everything obviously but I I knew enough to where I basically didn't even need the class anymore which was ironic also because it was an optional class like I didn't technically have to take it to graduate I it was just like my advisor was like, you should take this if you don't have any coding experience so that you can take the next few classes. And I was like, okay, well, I don't, so that'll be great. Uh, but then I ended up taking it anyway, which is so, so funny. Because I, like, I ended up getting all that coding experience beforehand. But let's talk about that. So um, the way that I started programming was, the first thing that I did was I went to YouTube and I, well, actually, I might have this in the guide already. Let me open up my guide and I will show you guys. I don't think I have the exact one that I watched, but basically the thing that I did is I went to YouTube and I basically did something like this. Like I went to one of these kinds of like tutorials and then I just was like, okay, let's just watch YouTube for a little bit. Right. So I would watch like these playlists or like these like long, like four or five hour videos. And I just watched them for just a little bit. I didn't. I was just kind of following along a little bit, and um, essentially, that's all I did for like the first day. I just watched videos like that, and I think I didn't watch for very long. I think I only spent like maybe two or three hours at most watching this stuff, um, which is still like a decent chunk of time. But that's not enough to master a programming language, obviously. I mean, that's basically like one week's worth of lectures, essentially. Um, but anyway, so I watched those videos and then on the next day, the thing that I did was I had a, I had a project idea. 
So this is the major thing. This is what I wanted to talk about. When I first got into programming, I had a project idea. I followed pages on Facebook. There was this one page. I don't think it exists anymore, which is uh, a shame. It was really funny. Um, it was called Daily Updates on Michael Jackson's Health Condition. Some of you might know it already. Um, it was basically, the, the humor of this page was that every single day, it would just post, he's dead, every single day. And it was just hilarious to me. And I thought to myself, like, you know, this kind of page idea is so funny, and it has so many people following it. Like, it would be so easy to write a Python script that could do something like this automatically. Now, in my opinion, part of the humor is that the page didn't post every single day. It was kind of like just at random at different times of the day, just randomly. I guess whenever the admin logged on to remember to post, and it was just like, you know, it, you'd go a few days and then all of a sudden you'd be scrolling through your news feed on Facebook and it would just be like, he's dead. And you're like, oh God, it's funny every time. But, um, oh, there's some big thunder outside. About to storm like hell out there. Anyway, um, I'm in Tennessee right now, for those of you who are in the desert. Uh, and you don't get rain ever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, yeah, so I followed this page on Facebook, and I was like, I want to make a page like this, but I don't know what specifically I want to do. And this was back in 2021, so COVID-19 was still a big deal, and it still kind of is to an extent, but it was, like, much more new at that time. So I was like, I want to make a page that posts, like, the daily number of COVID cases every single day. And so I did. And the way that I did this... I did this without any coding experience. The way that I did it was I found two really helpful um, Python tutorials online on YouTube. And I'm honestly blessed that I found these tutorials because I don't think I ever would have gotten as good in Python as I did without these tutorials. Like, I think if I had a different start, like kind of like how I did in Visual Basic, like I think, I mean, maybe eventually I would have, you know, things would have happened similarly, but like... You know, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like I owe my success to these sorts of things, honestly. I mean, I'm it, it's just amazing. But anyway, okay, moving on. So I found these two tutorials online, um, one of which was, like, how to scrape websites. So um, basically what this... Uh... Okay, sorry. Basically what my script did was it went to worldodometer.com and it went to like this website i think i think it was this exact url and then uh it would basically scrape this html tag it would scrape the text off this html tag so uh hang on there we go so it would go here and it would scrape this html tag and then it would grab the text from it right here it would grab this text and then it would save that text to a string and then I watched another YouTube video, the second one, which was how to post stuff to Facebook through the API. And so I had to get an API key and everything. So I made this Facebook page and it, it worked for a while. And then one day I woke up and the page was gone. It was just completely gone. Facebook just scrubbed every aspect of it. Like I couldn't even find it in the developer portal or anything. Like it was just wiped out of existence so i guess facebook was like upset that i was posting the covid cases maybe as like some kind of maybe they thought it was like political or something i don't know that was that's literally all it did all it did was post the covid cases to the news feed which i guess was like kind of fear-mongering or something i don't know i didn't really think about it it, was, it honestly just i didn't have like a motive for it it was honestly just like hey what if we just update people on what the covid cases are i don't know i mean but I guess it's just not really all that helpful to know, and it just makes people feel anxious, and, you know, whatever. I don't know what the reasoning was, but anyway, so that page idea didn't fully work out. But I did execute the idea, and the whole code is right here, so you can see it. Um, and I actually refactored this a little bit, so it's this isn't exactly what it looked like when I first made the code, but it's pretty close. So I have this function here that gets the COVID cases. And this is the part where it's like web scraping and it uses the beautiful soup library to do that essentially. And then, um, and then this was the part about getting the API key or not like getting the key, but like using the key essentially. 
and it would just like pass in the message and then you would just pass in like the COVID case number and then it would send that. So it's like this gets the COVID cases and then this gets the, this would send the post and then this is actually, well, technically this is just getting it ready and then this would actually send the post request through the request library. But like literally like I had the, when I first made this script, like this looks kind of like, it sounds like a crazy idea. But literally, when I first made this script, it was like 30 lines of code. Or like, no. It was like 23 lines of code. I'm not even kidding. So it really wasn't that hard to write. I mean, it, each individual piece was like sort of hard, but not really. And for a first project, it was a really good project because it was pretty small in scope. You're just going to a website, grabbing one number, and then just sending a Facebook post request. And it's like, it's, it's not really all that hard. So I followed these two tutorials and that made it work. And then, you know, knowing that knowledge and knowing those tutorials, I thought, well, what if I could do this again with another kind of page? So similarly, I followed the format of the Michael Jackson page and I made this page. It's kind of funny, um, but the humor is a little distasteful to some and I, I totally get that. Um, so if it's not your thing, you know, it is what it is. But it's basically the same idea, but for Betty White. And so every day it just posts, she's dead. And like, you know, it gets, it doesn't get that much engagement, but you know, it's whatever. It's more just humor for me. I, I never really meant to make it like a super popular page or anything. So it was just kind of funny. But then I had the idea of, okay, well, we can post a static thing or even a dynamic thing. Like the COVID cases is a dynamic thing. It's always going to be changing unless we eradicate it or something. And the... Betty White thing is a pretty static thing. It's just going to post the same string every single day. Um, but what if we wanted to post something that's a little bit more advanced? So this is where I I think about the idea of building on your experience. Like, okay, now I have the experience to know how to make Facebook pages and know how to post automatically to Facebook pages. What can I do with that? Like, what else can I get? What can I build with this, with this toolkit that I've learned and, and created? And so I eventually settled upon the idea of making an automatic meme page. And I'll show you this, by the way, uh, in the GitHub. So um, on my GitHub, you can see the meme page. And then I'll show you the... This was the Betty White script, by the way. And look how small it is. Like, I refactored it, I'm pretty sure. But, like, look how small it is. Like, this isn't that big. Like, yeah, it's like 100 lines, basically. But, like... Look at the actual, like, most of it's just documentation. Look at the actual lines of code. There's, like, three lines of code here. This is six. This is, like, I don't know, 59 to 68, which is, like, nine. So, so what was that? Six and nine, 15. And then we're at, I don't know, like, 19, 23, 24 lines of code for the whole Betty White bot page. So, I mean, most of it's just documentation, to be honest with you, uh, which is still important, even for small-scale projects, in my opinion, especially for people who are going to come in and, like, you know, basically try to improve your scripts or whatever. But anyway, that was the Facebook page for Betty White, and then I have the meme poster page, which I have somewhere. Here it is. Meme poster. So, it's... Meme poster is a lot because I haven't refactored it the same way I refactored my nature page, which I'll talk about next. Um, but basically it's just, it's a lot. There's a lot of stuff for a meme poster. It's a pretty, it's not like insanely big, but it's like the code itself is kind of weird and there's just a lot going on, honestly. So yeah. Huh. Anyway, I haven't refactored it though, but anyway, so I made a meme page. And the way it worked is, it went to Reddit, actually. This was before Reddit did their crazy API pricing stuff. So it went to Reddit, and it got uh, memes from Reddit. And some of these memes are like... I Honestly, to be honest with you guys, I didn't find a lot of these memes super funny. But some of them were pretty decent. And just like, you know, because of that, it was just... It was really cool. Now, the meme sources that I was using was like a bunch of subreddits that were essentially like just general meme subreddits they they weren't like specific around a specific like topic like dungeons and dragons memes or something for example or like you know sports memes or whatever it was just kind of general memes so because of that the quality of memes 
were never too deep and it was never you know a lot of it was like low effort stuff or just memes about like the world and world events and stuff so you know like like this kind of thing i never thought that all this kind of stuff is really all that funny but you know it was a decent idea and it and to be honest it did post some pretty funny stuff sometimes but um yeah anyway so that was my next page idea and uh this is funny <laughs> this is kind of interesting um anyway yeah so i made a meme page and i really like this in theory i wish i could have made it even more funny but that's just a note about where you get your data from if you're going to be automating anything make sure that you have good data because if if your memes suck what's the point of making a meme page if the sources of your memes are terrible anyway so you're just shoveling more crap onto another service at that point anyway let's talk about this so the next thing i did was a nature page because i was like okay so one day i was on facebook and i was scrolling through my feed and it was just a lot of like politics and just religious like drama and just just a lot of like ugh, you know like i mean I, I just need a break, you know, I just, I want a nice blissful, it's like that feeling when you step outside into the real world and you just admire the beauty of nature and you're just like, ah, you know, there's no wars going on right here, there's no, there's no trauma and, and drama and politics, it's just blissful peace in nature. And so I wanted something like that on my newsfeed. So I did. I made a I made a bot that posts nature photos automatically, and it, the source of the nature photos were really good. I used Pexels API, um, and by the way, I wanna I really wanna stress here that a lot of my projects I didn't just like I'm not some genius. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on most of these ideas, and I got stuck many many times, and. You know, it, it it may sound like I'm just some genius, I guess, where it's like, I had a meme page idea, and then I did it. But, like, I struggled for so long. Like, I, I, okay, this is kind of personal, but I suffer from ADHD and OCD and anxiety disorders and a lot of perfectionism. And I have this obsessive personality. When I get a goal, like, when I have a goal in mind, like... I want to make a meme page. I will not stop. I will not sleep. I will not eat. Well, I will eat and take like a walk or something and I'll sleep, I guess. But it's in, like metaphorically speaking, I will not do anything else until I get that done. When I had the idea for the nature page, like this page, it took me like a week to do it and I didn't do anything else that week. Like I did whatever necessary schoolwork I needed to do and whatever and my job and stuff. But beyond that, outside of that... I didn't do anything else. I just worked on the nature page all day, all night. You could ask my girlfriend, or at least my ex-girlfriend now, if she was here. She could tell you I, I literally would stay like up all day just typing away, programming away, trying to get this idea to work. Um, and I struggled a lot. And I I had to learn, like this was back in the day before ChatGPT and all these other tools that you can use to ask questions. And I never learned programming from, like, a mentor or anything. Like, I just did it all on my own. So anytime I had problems or I struggled with something, I just had to, like, kind of suffer through it. Like, I just had to Google my questions and ask my more specific questions and like, Discord servers and on subreddits and stuff and just hope that people wouldn't laugh me out of existence and try to, like, you know research similar questions on stack overflow threads and just hope that i'm really fully understanding what they're saying when i wasn't half the time so i struggled a lot this was not easy to do um but that's how it goes um but anyway so yeah so i had this nature photo page idea that i worked on and uh, i just want to show you just a snippet of the code I actually don't really allow pictures of people on my page. Like, if it's just people like this, I always delete posts like this. And then there's other posts like this. It's like, this isn't really a nature photo. So I still have to do a little bit of filtering. But for the most part, like, look how great this is. Like, look at the quality of these posts. They're so beautiful. Like, all this stuff is really high definition. Like, look at this. Like, 
it's hard to tell from the, you know, probably from the video compression and everything, but this is a, like a really high resolution image. And if we go to the actual link, which I always post in the link, like you can see the level of detail in these images. It's just beautiful. It's really beautiful. And the photo uses the original copy of the image, like the original one that's uploaded. Well, maybe not the exact original because it's uploaded to Pexels. But it uses the original, like, highest resolution version of the image to post to Facebook. So, anyway. Um, and uh, the other few page ideas that I had, like, because, like... So, I will say, in working on these Facebook... Uh, Sorry, in working on these Facebook bots, I did actually get a lot of experience in using like lists in Python and a bunch of other data types. So I basically tried other things. I basically used my knowledge to try other things. So eventually at one point I was actually playing the game Wordle. Some of you guys might remember Wordle. I don't know. Maybe some of you still play it. I was playing the game Wordle, and my, uh, I was with my ex-girlfriend, my girlfriend at the time, and she was playing Wordle. I never played Wordle before, and I was like, what is this game? And she told me, and she showed me, and I was like, oh, it's kind of like that, it's like that Lingo game, like on the Game Show Network way back in the day. It's like Lingo, you know, but like in a game, like that you can play. And, uh, Lingo used to have this cool, like the Game Show Network used to have this cool, like, online version of the game they used to play. Uh, with people, which is hilarious. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, so she showed me the game. And then I was looking at the game, and I was like, there's got to be a way that I could, like, like, I bet you I could find a way to make a bot or, like, a script that can solve Wordle. Like, I bet I could find a way to do it. And so I did. I worked on this script, and it was really, really cool. It took me a couple days because I had to do a lot of list comprehensions and things that I really wasn't prepared for. But the basic core functionality was there, and it was great. So I'll show you, actually. So I'll demonstrate this one. So this I'll show you the code, and this is on GitHub if you want to see it. Um, so let me just... Oh, whoops, clicked the wrong thing. Sorry. Okay, so let's run this script, and I will show you. Okay, so the way it works is, you start the script up, and, whoops, if it'll start. And it asks you if, oh god, I clicked too many times. Okay, sorry. So you start the script up, and it will ask you how many, like, letter positions that you know are in the target word. So it's like, do you do you know any letter positions? So like, for those of you who play the game Wordle, um, let me see. Actually, there's a way you can play Wordle online. Let me show you guys. Wordle online. New York Times Wordle. Let's play a game of Wordle real quick. It, it will only take like a second anyway. So I did some, also I did some data analysis and I found that Arise is a really good starting word, by the way, because it uses like all the top, like, not all of them, but it uses, like, if you use arise and then until as your two starting words, you can basically eliminate nine out of the top ten most used words, or, like, most used letters in the alphabet. So, okay, so we do know that an S is in there. So now we can, like, run our script here, and let me just kind of move this out of the way so we can see it at the same time. So it says, do you know any letter positions in the target word? And then we say yes. It says, how many do you know? I know one, because one of them is green. So I know that, and by the way, for those of you who never played Wordle before, the gray letters means that it's not in the word. So there, it's like hangman, like there's no A, I, or E in the word. Which, by the way, that's three out of the vowels. So we know that none of these vowels are in there. So it's probably, there's probably an O or a U somewhere in there. And then we, the, the yellow letters means that there's an R somewhere in the word, probably here, probably in the middle, or in the very beginning. But... Um, we know that there's an R somewhere in the word, but we don't, it's not here, so it wouldn't be in this position. And the S being in green means that the S is in the word, and it is there, like there is an S there. There actually could be more than one S. We don't know that. So anyway, okay, so how many letter positions do you know? One. All right. What letter do you know the position of? S. Okay. Now, where at in the word? One, two, three, four, or five. Where is it at? Okay, four. So, oh, I broke my code. 
I think it's because I don't have the file. Hang on. With open wordless file name. Oh no. Official word wordless.txt. Uh oh, maybe I didn't save it as a text file or something. Maybe that's why. That could honestly just be it. It could be that stupid. Okay, let me just rerun it real quick and we'll see if we can get past that. <laughs> that's so funny that it just breaks. Alright. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Yep. I know one letter position, I know S, and it's in the fourth letter. Okay, cool. We're moving on. All right. Okay. So it says, how many yellow, uh, like, do you know if there's any other, like, yellow letters in the word? I said, yes, I do, actually. Um, and it says, okay, enter the yellow letters with sp separated by a comma. I only know R, so that's the only one I'm going to enter. It says, now do you know any gray letters? Okay, yep, I know there's A. Or wait, actually, sorry, it's just asking me yes or no. And I'm going to say, okay, A. It actually doesn't matter if I use capitals or not. A, I, or E. Okay. And so it says that these are all the possible words that it could be. So notice it didn't put an R in the second position of any of these words. And it's only it's only recommending words that have an S as the fourth letter. And they could have other S's. Like I think one of them, I saw one that had two S's. And they're like dross. I don't even know if that's actually a word. Is it? I have to, I have to look that up. That's a new word. I haven't heard that before. But yeah, it's not as helpful when you're first starting. But like, let's say I do this and I say until, which I know there's not an I in there, but you know, whatever. So it's like, okay, I know there's not a U in there. So it's like, okay, do you want to search again? Yes, so I'll show you. So it says, how many letter positions do you know? Uh, or do you know any letter positions? Yep, one, and then it's S, and then it's at four. And then it's like, okay, do you know any other letter positions? Uh, like any other yellows? Yep, and then R and T. And okay, enter all the gray letters. Okay, A... I, E, U, N, L. Oh wait, sorry, that was a that was a yes or no. <laughs> there we go. Okay, all right. So now it eliminated it all the way down to ten. And mind you, this text list, by the way, it's like fifteen thousand some possible letters, like so, or some possible words. Like, yeah, it's like fourteen thousand. So we eliminated the entire word list down to like ten. Which is nuts. So usually what I'll do is I'll look at the words and I'll be like, which one is probably the most likely word? Because it's usually not words that you've never heard of most of the time. It's usually more popular words like torso is a good one. Frost is a good one. Worst. So we could try that. I mean, frost maybe. Well, no, it, actually. Yeah, it wouldn't be because frost. Okay, I didn't tell it that frost wasn't one of those letters. So uh, scratch that. Let's try torso. Let's see how that one works. And we'll see if that gets it. Oh, we're so close. Okay, so it's probably worse, just by my own estimate, because T is the last letter. There we go, see? And that's how it solves it. And that was one of the solutions right there. That's why I don't call this Wordle Solver, because it doesn't necessarily solve the uh, the game for you. It just suggests possible answers, so it like seeks out the, the possible answers. So I just call it Wordle Seeker, technically, just for the sake of false advertising essentially but that's the script i made like literally all it does is it just works with strings and lists and user input that's all it does essentially um and so i had this idea i literally had this idea when i was driving or i wasn't driving technically but when i was riding in the car with my mom and my girlfriend at the time we were riding back from some like family event and i literally had this at the time we were i again my girlfriend just showed me wordle like a few days ago and i've been kind of hooked on it when she showed me that um, you know, as one does when you find something new that's like a fun little addiction or whatever. So I was kind of hooked on this and I was like, okay, I want to play Wordle. So, um, you know, I played Wordle for a little while and I thought about this. I was like, this is really just a bunch of strings. Like this is just a bunch of strings and a, and a list of strings. Like if I can just find a giant word list of all like five letter words, I could easily make this. Like it wouldn't be that hard to just say, okay, get all the words that don't have the string letter in this position and in this position and only letters that are only, only strings that have letters that are this letter in this position but not in this one and stuff like that so you know there's still room for improvement as you saw with the yellow r thing i'm think i, I want to make like a like a graphical user interface for this um but anyway i don't want to get too distracted here but basically so that was the next big programming project i did and and so I called it Wordle Seeker, and it's on GitHub if you want to see it. It's it's pretty cool. Um, and then I did a bunch of other stuff. Like, I did the DVD logo screensaver, which I wish I would have made a GIF of this and put it on the um, 
the repository, but it's basically like when you run it, it it's like the little it's like the little DVD logo that kind of like bounces around the screen. It does that in Pi Game, which is kind of cool. Um, another thing, another few things that I did was I made a movie picker script because my girlfriend at the time, uh, same girlfriend I keep talking about, we were dating for a while, so there's a lot of it, and sh the funny thing is we started dating around the same time I started learning Python, so it kind of just worked out. <laughs> but um, anyway, so. Uh, yeah, my girlfriend and I at the time, we had this, like, spreadsheet of, like, movies that we wanted to watch. And some of it was movies that we both haven't seen, some of it was movies that only one of us had seen, and we wanted to show the other. And I had so many movie recommendations. I was like, okay, I, I just, I have so many movies I want to show you. So I just put it all in a spreadsheet. And then it would come time where we'd want to watch a movie, and I was just scrolling through the spreadsheet, and I was like, I don't know what I want to watch. Like, I just don't know. There's too, there's too many options, you know? And none of it sounds, like, perfect right now. But, you know, maybe I'll just leave it up to chance. Maybe I'll just flip a coin, essentially. So I did that. So I, I made a, a Python script that can read the... It was on Google Sheets. And I made a Python script that hooked into Google Sheets API, and it could scan all the rows of the spreadsheet, which each row was its own movie listing. We had it, like, listed out, like, the whether I've watched it, whether she's watched it, like what the what the name of the movie was that was the first thing in the row or in the column or whatever and then it was like what the genre of the movie is and i think we didn't have like everything about it listed it was just like simple stuff and so all the python script really did was it hooked into the api it built this list and then it just picked a random row from the list and then it just said okay you should watch this movie and if you didn't like the recommendation you could re-roll it and it would just keep producing random results and there was also an option for, like, sometimes we would put movies on there on the watched list. Like, okay, I want to, we've already watched this together, but I want to watch it again sometime. So we had, like, a watched and unlock, unwatched section. So it could choose between whether you wanted to, like, pick a movie that you've seen before or not. And then it would roll based on that recommendation or not. So that was another little like project that I did and then I did a few others that were like kind of just math related stuff like I did a quadratic formula calculator based on the a b and c values of your equations and then I did fast modular exponentiation which is pretty hard to explain uh so I'm not going to get into it too much but you can look into that if you want and I did one that checks for palindromes like uh like race car for example race car is spelled the same forwards and backwards for those of you who don't know it's kind of a fun fact and it checks strings for that. So it'll check to see, like, okay, if I flip this around, would it work? And, like, would it be the same? And so, yeah, it returns true if it is or not. And then it'll it'll tell you. Um, anyway, and then I did one that finds all the Pythagorean triplets that are, like, for example, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, because the Pythagorean theorem is, like, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 9 plus 16 is 25, so it's a Pythagorean triplet. Um, and it finds all those within, like, 1 to 500, but you could theoretically go in the code and change it to be, like, whatever you wanted to, if you wanted. So you could make it, like, instead of 1 to 500, you could run it with up to 10,000 or something. I also, for the sake of everyone's time, I did upload it to a text file, and so you can see all the Pythagorean triplets, essentially... Um, I don't think it repeats. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't think it repeats. So it doesn't say like 3, 4, and 5, and then 4, 3, and 5. Pretty sure. So if you want to see all the Pythagorean triplets from here all the way to, you know, like 500, you can. This this honestly helped me a lot when I was doing math. I, I honestly did this because I was taking math classes, and I was like, I'm tired of, like, stumbling upon these. Like, I just want a big list. And I tried to look this up to, like, see, like, okay, I was trying to Google it, and I was trying to be like, okay... Uh, what are all the Pythagorean triples uh, up, up to like 100 or something? And you can find this, and like sometimes it's easy to find, but at the time when I was Googling it, I really couldn't find any good, like, consistent results about it. Um, so I just, I made a Python script that did it. It was pretty simple. Just multiply the numbers, and if they're integers, then return it. And if not, if it's a float, then ignore it and just keep going. And so it was basically just a double for loop. It's, it's pretty much all it did. Um, but yeah, so I made a couple of math scripts like this. And then, um, where am I at? Here we go. And so 
yeah, and then the final thing I wanted to talk about was, um, let's see if there was anything else I'm missing. I also did some uh, utility functions for Excel and stuff. And I made a pull request to the Pexels API that I was using so that I could support videos. That was pretty cool. I did a yearly progress bar. I've done a website text extraction, which extracts all the P text from the HTML tags. Stuff like that. Uh, most recently, I did a tender personal data analytics script. That was really funny. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I wasn't very happy with my tender stats. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> But it was fun nonetheless. It was, it was pretty easy to write. Um, the, the major last thing that I've been working on is a Discord bot. So I've had a Discord bot that's been like a big project for me. And um, it's still a work in progress. But, you know, it's got, a, it's got quite a few different features to it. I've been building this project up for like two years now. So it's gotten, well, not two years, probably about a year. About a year now I've been building it up. So it's gotten quite a few... Um, things I guess like 10 months ago because I don't think I ever updated this since then um, anyway um, the last thing I wanted to show you guys was the code for nature bot and not specifically the code but more so the readme because I actually was so I was on reddit one day and I was essentially like scrolling through reddit and I was on this subreddit called technical writing because at one point in my career, I was considering going into technical writing. Kind of glad I didn't do that. It's not really for me. But, you know, everyone questions things, you know. Just kind of feeling things out. But I stayed in the subreddit regardless, because it was kind of cool. Um, so, I found a post from someone who was, like, upset that it was hard to find projects on GitHub to contribute to. To build up their resume. And I was like, hey, I have a project idea that you could uh, work on. So, oh, thanks. Uh, so I was like, hey, I have a project idea that you could work on. So I, uh, sorry, I had basically like showed him the project and he, um, he wanted to help out with it. I'm sorry. My whole train of thought has just been completely wrecked. Um, anyway. I showed him the project idea and he wanted to help out and I explained how the code worked and everything. So I want to show you guys what this looked like before and after his updates. Um, okay, sorry. Um, okay, this was the documentation branch. So this, no. This is what my code looked like at this point. Like, this is what the, what the, um, readme looked like. I'm sorry. So he went in and he made it all pretty and, and documented it a lot more and everything. So this is what it looks like now. So it's like, you know, got all the fancy little emojis in there. It's got a lot more images. All the text is broken up a lot more. Shows example posts that it does. Um, it talks about the get requests that I made. Um... It shows, like, example queries from the Pexels API, which is, like, really cool. Um, it talks about, like, the, like, how I use the search terms to find, like, how to search images and stuff on the Pexel service. And it was just, like, it also talked about optical character recognition, which I didn't expect them to write about, but it was really cool that they did. And then how to, like, post it to Facebook and, and all that, so... Um, yeah, it was just, it was really cool. Um, I really highly recommend, for those of you who want to go into technical writing, this is like a good example of, I think, really well-written documentation for a project. And I would honestly recommend this. If, if you want to go into technical writing, please, like, find programmers who just do stuff volunteer, like, voluntarily. And just volunteer to help out. Like, just in your own spare time, you don't have to devote, like, you know, 100 hours to this. But just, like, maybe once once a month or something, just try to find some random project that you can talk to the developer on and get them to explain how the code works and then see if you can contribute to it. Because look, now that person's name is right there on the project with me. Whenever you go to my nature, like, nature poster project on GitHub, their stuff is right there. So it's like really cool. So 
anyway. But, um, yeah, so my journey in programming has just been all over the place, and I just want to conclude this video with talking about, like, oh, and also I'm doing internships now, so I forgot to mention that. So I also started, like, I was, I became uh, a teaching assistant for the Python class that I was so afraid of originally, which is ironic. Um, and then I am going into internships now. I'm currently in the process of applying to more of them. I don't have quite enough. But I'm still a teaching assistant for the class, and I am, uh, I, I'm doing, like, scientific coding for the Stewart Observatory funded by like NASA and other grants and stuff over the University of Arizona. So that's pretty cool. Uh, working on the Bioverse project. I think it's what it was. Yeah. Um, so that's also in my GitHub as well. I've been kind of working on that. I've not really done anything yet because I'm not officially in it fully yet. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much got the job. We just haven't fully started yet, but that's what I'm going to be working on here soon. And then I'm trying to get another job. I think, I think what I really want to do is, um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know what I want to do coding wise, but I think one of the things that would be really cool would be probably like, I don't know, test automation or something, maybe like QA. I, I really like the idea of reviewing other people's code. I find that to be really, really fun. Like when I'm grading my students' assignments, it's so fun for me most of the time because, I mean, it gets a little monotonous because I'm seeing the same code again and again and again. But I mean, you know, just the idea of it initially is like really fun to be able to see like how people write their code and be able to suggest changes and improvements and, and like see like, okay, maybe you didn't need to do like a triple for loop there. Like you could have just did one once and then, you know, all this, but you know, just stuff like that, being able to suggest possible improvements and, and better variable names and better formatting and stuff like that. I find that really fun, especially the thing that I find the most fun about QA is finding ways to break people's code, finding like what what's the po what is every possible way that I could break this code and what's the funnest, most like hilarious way that I could break your code without you even thinking about it, you know, um, that's always hilarious to me. So I've been thinking about like going into maybe like cybersecurity or something, uh, but not so much with an emphasis on like being an IT guy, but more so like with like a heavy computer science emphasis and cybersecurity and stuff like that. So uh, maybe going into, um, I don't know, just like general like test automation, maybe like SDET or something. I'm not really sure yet. I don't know what I want to do, um, but it's okay. I'm still figuring it out. Still got a lot of internships ahead of me that I can use as work experience and figure out exactly what I want to do and what I'm good at and all that jazz. But anyway, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, anyway, I just wanted to close out this video and, and tell you guys that, that coding is just like anything in the world. It's, it's not something that's a linear path and a lot of people learn programming in many different ways. And, you know, I've spent a lot of time programming very stagnantly. Like I haven't really improved a lot in some aspects, like for example, I made like four different Facebook pages and I wasn't really learning that much. I mean, I was learning a little bit from each page, but it wasn't, I wasn't really learning anything as far as like Facebook was concerned. Like I was kind of learning the other stuff, like how I got memes from Reddit and then I got nature photos from Pexels. Like I was learning these different things, like now how I'm making a Discord bot. But I mean, my progress has been pretty slow, all things considered, maybe. I mean, I guess that's sort of relative. I don't know. Um, but I just want you guys to realize that, you know, learning anything in life is just, it's not always the most, you know, it, it's, it's not always the, the most linear path. I mean, it's not as simple as just taking a class and just learning it and going from there, because even after the class, your path is going to be so distorted and all over the place i mean who knows what internship you're going to get who knows what you're going to learn from that internship or what job you get or whatever like who knows what projects you're going to end up working on i mean you could start out as a python programmer and then end up writing ui code for websites like front-end websites like react and like the react framework with javascript and css and html and stuff like that i mean who knows what you could be doing you could be doing electrical engineering like i was for a while I mean, just who knows? So, you know, I don't want you to think that 
anyone's journey is very linear because it's it's really not i mean yeah anyway also a lot of my programming knowledge so far anyway i i learned on my own i learned from projects and i learned from like self-learning i didn't really learn it from university like i've really not learned anything from my time in university except for math because I wouldn't have learned math just on my own. Like, I don't mind learning math, but I, I probably wouldn't have just, like, sought it out. You know, like, I would have... I, I'm glad that I learned it, like, in class, at least. But, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, what I recommend for those of you who are just starting out in Python or just starting out programming, or even if you just finished a Python class or something, um, what I really recommend is finding a project idea. Something really genuine, something you actually want to work on, like the Facebook page idea. It, it literally came to me as I was right, like riding in a car. I think my mom was driving at the time because I think I was going with her to something, uh, and I was just carpooling with her essentially. And I was sitting in the car, and I just thought of this idea. I thought of the the Michael Jackson page, and I literally thought of that idea. I was like, what if, what if I made a page that was like that? I feel like that would be kind of easy to do. I don't think it would be all that hard. There's a lot of tutorials out there. There's a lot of knowledge out there. You know, you just got to know how to search for stuff um, and apply and apply what you learn. So, yeah, I mean, and the Wordle thing, like that was, I thought the Wordle script was kind of genius, but in reality, it's pretty simple. And it literally came to me as I was riding in a car again. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to say is like, sometimes this stuff is really not all that linear that you might think. Um, this, this stuff just kind of comes to you at random times. But anyway. Um, yeah, I recommend starting small and having a project idea. Something that's, like, small enough that you could work on, but not so small that it's, like, monotonously boring or it doesn't feel like there's a purpose to it, you know? So, anyway. Okay. Well, I'm done rambling. I've been talking for, like, almost an hour. <laughs> I didn't mean to make this video so long. It's just I had a lot to say about my life and programming. I'm, this stuff is... I'm pretty passionate about this stuff, and it's really fun for me. Um, it's a really fun hobby, and it... It makes my GitHub look really fancy, too, because it's like, oh, he's worked on all these projects. Like, look at this. He's got, like, this project here and, like, this project here. And it's like, I just program for fun. Like, I really, I'm not some fancy, like, genius or whatever. And most of the stuff on its own is actually pretty simple, to be honest. It's just I have a lot of diverse little things here. But anyway. Um, yeah, and, and honestly, if you, one more last piece of advice I will say about projects, by the way. If you can't think of a project yourself make friends and try to help them with their projects. And as you help them with their projects, you might think of your own ideas. You might think of criticisms. You might think, well, if I was doing this, I would probably do it this way. And then it's like, well, I can, I could go and make a project like this and do it this way if I wanted to, you know, if it's like a really big diverge, you know, or you could think like, or, or you could say, okay, maybe I would do it the same way, but I want to do, I want to apply this idea to like a different thing. Like maybe you're, transcribing YouTube videos into text and you want to apply that to another creator that you watch and maybe you don't want to just transcribe the text maybe you want to see like how many times a creator has said this certain word over the past year or you know ever since this thing got trending or something you know like little things that's how it starts you have these little tiny ideas and it just it's like little sparks and you just got to fuel those fires you got to you got to not like you got to not have these ideas and then just be like, okay, I'll work on it eventually. Like, you got to start on this stuff and you got to really try. I mean, at least write it down, you know, and save it for a rainy day, even if you can't work on it right now. I've had ideas like that lately where it's like I've been really busy, so I can't work on all the ideas that I have. I mean, I have so many ideas now. But that's one thing I love about programming and just any hobby in general, like any skill, is like as you get better at it, more practice with it, more experience with it, it starts to become clearer, like, what like how you can apply it and how you can do more with it. You know, like the more you use a hammer, the easier it is to see where you could use a hammer later on, you know, similarly like with programming. So I think that's just really awesome. So anyway, okay, I'm going to shut up now. Uh, <laughs> but I wish you guys the best. I, I, I wish everyone that watches this video and just a general, everybody in the world, I just wish all you guys the best of luck in coding and just know that it's really not it's not as, like, crazy as you might think it is, and all it takes is one good project idea. Just one. Just one project idea, because by the time you finish that project, 
you're already going to be thinking about, like, how can I apply this to other things? Like, how could I modify this project? Like, the Facebook idea. I had a Facebook page idea that I wanted to make, and then I thought, okay, well, I have this other page idea, and then I did that. And it's like, well, what about this page idea? And so, you know, it just, like, it, it opens so many doors. Once the door is open, it just swings open. Like, it just keeps going. And sometimes, I will say, sometimes you don't always come up with a, a project idea immediately. So it's okay to sit on things. Like, it's okay to just kind of sit for a while and be dormant for a while. Like, it's totally fine. And it's okay if you have to keep looking stuff up again. The same stuff that you've done, like, a million times. It's totally fine. I had to do that so many times. I really learned programming the hard way. Like, I kind of taught myself. I had to learn so many things that were above my level that I really shouldn't have learned at the time. I, I learned things in weird orders. Like, I didn't use dictionaries for the longest time because I just didn't know what they were and how to use them. Um, like, and I, I was using list comprehensions, even though I didn't even know what dis dictionaries was. Like, I never did anything with objects until, like, recently. Until, like, well, the past, like, year or so. I started getting into object-oriented programming. And then really only in the last six months that I, like, really dive deep into it. And I got pretty okay at it. Um, but yeah, it's okay to take time to learn stuff. And, I, you know, it's it's okay. It's okay to sit with things for a while. You know, no one expects you to... Have everything down immediately. So. Well, maybe they do. But you shouldn't expect that of yourself. Anyway. Okay. I am done for real now. I'm not actually shut up now. Hope you guys have a good day. I hope you guys have good luck in life. And good luck with your internships and interviews. And everything that you guys go to do in your life. Um, but, yeah. I'll see you guys later. Take care.